In our last episode, the Obra Dinn was attacked by ghost-like creatures wearing black shrouds riding giant crab-like beasts. They climbed aboard and immediately went below. We heard the captain call out that they were making for the lazarette. The sailors fought valiantly, but suffered heavy casualties. One of the creatures was burned to death, and the other was shot with a blunderbuss at point-blank range. We found a memory that led to that scene while exploring the starboard bow bosun store on the cargo deck. But while we were down there, we discovered a bunch of barrels in the port bow bosun store, and from one, a bunch of flies. What are a bunch of flies doing coming from this barrel? Every time we find flies on the Obra Den, they're always hovering over some sort of human or animal remains. Could this mean... A barrel crashes to the cargo floor, killing the man hiding within it. We heard him gasping for breath in that confined space, and the impact must have broken his neck. But nearby, we find another body, and it looks as if his head has been smashed. Who is this? We haven't seen him before. Peering up, we see the men who were trying to load cargo into the ship. Lars Linde on the Orlop deck, and a few others that are hard to make out. I think we see our Russian Volkov to the left there. And the bald guy up top looks like Nathan Peters. Below, is that the purser? Maybe one of the midshipmen. On the floor here, we find Alexander Booth, whom we identified in our last episode. But then the memory ends. Chapter 1, Loose Cargo, Part 2. So we finally get to explore the very first chapter in this book. On the cargo deck, an unidentified stowaway, expecting free passage and eventual freedom, was instead crushed inside a falling barrel. And it appears that the sailors never realized what happened. The remains rotted in this barrel for the entire adventure. Taking a look at the map, we can pick out the people who were present... Looks like Hak Seng Lao was there as well. We've identified almost everyone in this scene, with a few exceptions. This guy, whose face is still blurred. Interestingly, this guy, whose body we found, is not lit up in this scene, which means he must already be dead. And we find one other face here that's still blurry, a man we have yet to identify. Moving out of the book, we can further explore the memory. Turning around, we see the bald man with the blurry face. It may be possible to identify this guy at this point through a process of elimination, but we won't be able to record his fate until a bit later. Of note here, it's important to take a look at his boots. Nearby, we see one of the Russians moving a barrel in place, and we find Hak Seng Lao guarding a door down here on the cargo level. Interesting that he would be guarding this door as this isn't a bedroom. The passenger rooms are on another deck, Looking at the map, this is passenger cargo. What was it the Formosans were transporting that required an armed guard? When ready, we can activate the memento mortem. And sure enough, it's this other body crushed under the cargo. It takes us out of the bosun's store towards the middle of the cargo deck. When ready, we can explore the memory. Our 
our victim's head is crushed by this loose cargo. Above him, we see Lars Linde. He's the one who shouted down below. And we see a very similar scene that we saw just a moment ago. These two deaths happened almost simultaneously. This one happened first. It was the very first death to happen aboard the Obra Dinn. And then only a moment later, the stowaway in the barrel was also crushed to death. So almost everything else in this scene is exactly the same. Loose Cargo, Part 1, on the cargo deck. The face of our victim here is unblurred, and we can easily identify him by recalling something that was said in a previous scene. If we go all the way back to Chapter 7, The Doom, Part 1... Let me on. <laughs> Over my dead body, you bloody day. Huh? How's that? There's no cause for trouble, boys. Get in the boat. Huh? Before I forget... You killed my brother. What? That was an accident. The robes. It wasn't his fault. I saw the whole thing. Nice. Oh, I shouldn't have waited so long. No, don't. That's right. Nathan Peters killed Lars Linde, blaming him for the death of his brother. Lars Linde said it wasn't his fault. And Alexander Booth supported him. He said it was the ropes. What just happened in this scene? The ropes snapped. The cargo fell to the cargo deck, crushing the head of this victim. The victim whose death Nathan Peters later blamed on Lars Linde. The death of the man who is the brother of Nathan Peters, which means this victim's last name must be Peters. Taking a look at the manifest, the only person on the ship who shares the same last name as Nathan is number 60, Seaman Samuel Peters. Therefore, our victim here with the beard, who just so happens to also be right next to Nathan Peters in the Life at Sea sketch, must be Samuel Peters. And he died by being crushed by cargo. Once we've made our identification, we can take a look at the Life at Sea sketch, but we see all the same faces that we saw in the last one, since this death happened only a moment before the last one. We can examine the scene more closely, but we walk away with a lot of the same information. And that's the end of the Loose Cargo chapter. Only two deaths happened at this point in the journey before the ship even left England. And therefore, this chapter is very short. But the book more than makes up for this chapter's brevity in the next chapter, which I'll cover in an upcoming video. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in The Return of the Obra Dinn.